In this video, I'm going to look at how successive ionization energies compare. So in other words, that's ionization energies one after the other. So we've got four elements there, phosphorus, magnesium, aluminium and potassium. And these four graphs show how, in the case of phosphorus, it's 15 ionization energies compare with each other. Magnesium's 12, aluminium's 13, potassium's 19. So you can see all of the graphs are showing an increase in ionization energy. We'll just use phosphorus to explain the key points. All of the elements you can explain in exactly the same way. So essentially there are two things to explain. Why do the ionization energy show an increase each time you remove an electron? And why do we get these big jumps here and here? So all I've done is tabulated the 15 ionization energies for phosphorus. We'll just look at the first two and hopefully we'll be able to explain the increase in the ionization energies from these two. So the first ionization energy, so essentially that's to remove, let's say, this electron here, requires 1,012 kilojoules per mole. The second ionization energy, so let's say that's gone, we're removing this electron now, that requires slightly more energy, 1907 kilojoules per mole. And then the third one, a little bit more, and so on. So why is it taking more energy each time? And that's because, essentially, when you're removing the first electron, you're removing the electron from an atom. And so, therefore, you've got the same number of electrons to protons. So we've got a proton-to-electron ratio of 1 to 1. Once you've taken an electron out, you've got one fewer electron being attracted by the same number of protons as you had before. So the electrons are all experiencing more attraction, and so it takes a little bit more energy to take it out. So I'll try to explain that very simply there. For each successive ionization energy, the proton to electron ratio increases. Therefore, there's more positive charge attracting the remaining electrons each time. The electron being removed, so that's the outermost electron, is attracted more strongly. And now explaining those big jumps. So you can see I've got this red arrow here going from the fifth to the sixth. You've got this big jump up in energy. So we're going very small increments first to the second, second to the third, and so on. But when we're going from the fifth electron to the sixth being removed, there's a big jump up in energy from six, just over 6,000 to just over 21,000. And then we have more smaller increments, and then going from this 13th to the 14th, you can see that we're going from 59,000 just over, we're up to 271, nearly 272,000 kilojoules per mole. So that's an enormous jump up in energy. So what's going on? So if we look at the first five electrons, where we just have this gradual increase, these five electrons are all in the outermost shell. So we're getting that general increase due to what we've just explained. But then going from 5th to 6th, the big jump up. And that's because the 6th electron is one of these, so it's in an inner shell. So electrons in inner shells experience much greater attraction from the protons in the nucleus due to a shorter distance between the electron and the nucleus. So this electron here is much closer to the nucleus than these. And these electrons here also experience less shielding from the inner shells because essentially there's only that shell shielding the attraction, whereas these electrons had two shells in the way. So if we look at how many ionization energies we've got till the next big jump, you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the big jump. 
So that's because you've got eight electrons in this shell here, and then this huge increase in energy because we're breaking into the innermost shell, really close to the nucleus. No shielding at all now because that's the inner shell, and so a tremendous amount of energy needed to get the electrons out. So often you get a question in the exam which will just give you a table of data and just say which group is this element in. So all you're doing is looking for the first big jump up in energy and it will be obvious. So you've got these small increases and then you've got a very noticeable increase. So that's telling you that the number of electrons before the big jump is how many electrons in the outermost shell and therefore which group it's in.